What's going on guys? It's Nick here, back with another video. It's Monday, so you know what time it is. Time for another Mock Draft Monday, and a good one for you today. So, had some people request, they're like, Nick, love the Mock Drafts, but uh, we want you to do one that's legit. Like, we keep trying things out, you know, um, Mock Drafts are great for testing things, trying different strategies, trying di taking different players at different points. Um, they're like, go all in. Do a draft that you'd be doing in your money league. So I'm gonna combine that today uh, with showing you guys some different ADPs. So a lot of people also ask, what's the best site to be drafting on? We're gonna test out three. So I'm doing three mock drafts today. Gonna to have to go through each one a little bit quicker than usual, but there's three, so that's definitely gonna make up for it. Doing one on Fantasy Football Calculator, on Sleeper, and on Fantasy Pros, and I guess I'm going to answer the question because there actually is a pretty clear winner at this point. Could change throughout the offseason, but at this point is a pretty clear winner. So we're going to start things off, stat of the day, then we're going to do news, and then we're going to hop in to some mock drafts. So yesterday's question was which tight end lost the most fumbles in 2019? Answer was Dallas Goddard. Don't know who uh, who's going to win that because I record the mock draft Mondays a little bit early, but someone, of course, will win because it's a tight end question and there's not that many tight ends. Today's question, which quarterback threw the most touchdowns on third down last season? All right, put your answers in the comment section below. Only three bits of news because uh, over like the last week because we don't really go over the, the minor details, but three big things happened. So Cam Newton, of course, signing with the Patriots on an extremely low base salary, and then basically he just gets a roster bonus as his like incentive each week. So I think that caps out at about seven and a half million. Uh, but every single week he's on the roster, he's getting a bonus. And it's basically the ultimate prove it deal, right? Like he's going out there and if he does awesome this season, he's gonna get a really, really big contract. Um, for people who are wondering, does he fit the Patriot system? Yes, he is the perfect quarterback for the system. He's gonna excel in the short passing game. Um, he's going to have fantastic coaching. He's going to have coaching that has only had a non-mobile quarterback. So there's definitely going to be some unique plays in there that we haven't seen from the Patriots, given that Cam Newton can run a little bit better than Brady. Uh, this helps the value of all the pass catchers and Sony Michelle. However, you guys know I'm not really a big Sony Michelle fan, so I'm still not drafting him, although you have to say it helps the value. Uh, but it might just help the value of Damian Harris a little bit more as a sleeper late and currently Newton is my quarterback 13 if you're wondering so I think he's probably a low end one if he starts uh, we can't be sure he's going to start week one they could still have Stidham in there just because like he did just join the team in July so it might take a little bit of time to get him fully ready uh, but I wouldn't be shocked at all if they throw him out there in week one and he does really well so low end quarterback one for me uh, don't need to scroll a b might sign with the Seahawks, and of course that would hurt the value of Lockett, hurt the value of Metcalf, but it would make Russ just incredible. It would probably incre increase the chance that like, you know how we're very frustrated at times that Russ is incredible, you know, we'll have some decent weapons and they just run the ball a ton. We're like, throw it, <laughs> let Russ do Russ things. If they sign AV, Russ is gonna have some blow up games. So he'd probably end up being the quarterback three in the rankings if that happened. But uh, for AB himself, he's probably going to be suspended. We just don't know how much. Is it going to be two games? Is it going to be eight games? I don't know. So you can draft him in best ball leagues. I think in redraft right now, if you only have like five or six bench spots, that's probably a little too thin. But if he's going to go to Seattle, he's going to be a really nice late round pick. So I guess if you have a deeper bench, you can go after him. But for me, if you only have five or six again right now, probably would rather other players. Last bit of news, uh, Jarvis Landry, quote, looks great, but that just looks great on video. They haven't actually, like, had him in because, like, teams aren't practicing yet. But he's going to be ramped up slowly in camp. Got to keep an eye on this one. Remember the six- to eight-month time span, I guess, they gave him for his recovery in early February from his surgery? That's August to October. So with camp being delayed, the news that, like, let's say he's a little bit behind schedule and it's closer to October... We're not going to hear that news until potentially mid-August. And at that point, it's going to come as a bombshell to some people because no one's really thinking about it right now. They're like, oh, Landry's fine. Well, we just haven't heard anything. So 
keep an eye on that situation. We haven't really been drafting Landry. I don't think I've taken him in a single mock. But if you're someone who really likes the value on him, because he typically is a value, keep an eye on that. Um, that's it for that. Uh, polls, we didn't do one last mock draft. It was a super flex league, and I didn't really have any decision points that I was going back and forth on. So nothing to do there. Mock drafts. So 250. Eh, we'll probably wait. We'll do one on sleeper first. I was hoping to just come in here and it'd be like you're drafting in 30 seconds and that would be great timing, but no good timing. So don't do that. Um, draft settings. We're going to do half PPR league, 12 teams. Uh, we'll do 30 seconds to make sure that we actually go through these quickly because again, I don't want to make this an hour and a half long video. Yes, save. Normal roster settings, so we're going to get rid of what we had for super flex last week. So six bench spots, one quarterback, two running back, two wide receiver, the flex, everything being normal. Update that. We are going to randomize our order. We're picking second. Okay. And I think everything should be good. I, don't, I just want to make sure I didn't forget anything. Oh, okay. yeah. Begin this draft. So picking second, um, no decision. You McCaffrey's going to go one. You got to take Barkley two. Um, basically, any format, that's what's going to happen. Again, I don't want to go over just like super in-depth analysis on all of this because one, I have 30 seconds. And two, we're doing three mock shots. So you're going to see three teams that I would be drafting in a money league. Um, also, I want to point out ADP is a little bit better on sleeper than they have been. But still not perfect, so there still are going to be some values. Our options, wide receiver, we go with Evans, we go with Galladay, or uh, Allen Robinson, but there's a clear drop-off at running back. So I would absolutely be taking Kenyon Drake there. I would be comfortable taking Drake in the early second round. That's how much I like Drake. So, we like going with running backs. It would be smart to grab another running back here. Um, 18 seconds. Oh boy. So it's it's either Allen Robinson, who could be there at the next pick, or we're taking a running back. So for me, I think we're taking a running back, and I would go with Clyde at this pick. Your other option would basically be Fournette. So if you didn't like Clyde there, I think Fournette would be your play, given that there, there's like conflicting things with Fournette, because the touchdowns are going to regress positively, but also they're projected to be the worst team in the league. And if you remember my video, I posted... Would that be Sunday's video? Running backs on lowest scoring offenses never do well on a points per game basis. So yeah, the touchdowns will regress positively over time, but there's not going to be that many touchdowns on the offense. Um, okay. I would probably lean wide receiver here. And since there's, I would take Jonathan Taylor potentially, but guys, DJ Moore. I put out on Twitter, um, I think that um, DJ Moore is going to be a top three wide receiver this season. I think he is a slam dunk pick. And honestly, there's just nothing bad I can say about him. Um, here you go, Jonathan Taylor. So I know it's too quick, but I'm going to go over the entire team when the draft is done. So keep in mind that. Uh, so I'll go over my DJ Moore take when this is done. I'll go over my Clyde and Jonathan Taylor takes. You guys know I obviously like Barkley and Drake, so I probably don't need to go over those ones. Um, but three running backs. So we've got Barkley, we've got Drake, we've got Clyde, we've got Taylor. We lean wide receiver with this pick, which is good because we were in this range where we kind of like a lot of the wide receivers. Fortunately, uh, Odell goes, McLaurin goes, A.J. Brown goes, Chark goes. So that stinks. Um, but we've still got Gallup, we've still got Parker, who would definitely be our pick. I would, that's a slam dunk too. So I would take Devontae Parker. Um, I'd be looking... Oh, I didn't even see Sutton. So I'd be looking at Sutton... Gallup, Edelman. Hopefully Edelman's available at our next pick. Um, then there's probably a drop. I doubt... Yeah, there's... Oh, Josh Allen. Josh Allen at 7, but I don't think we need to go there. And I don't think we need to go at running back. So Sutton would be the play with that pick. I know I've kind of uh, trashed Sutton a little bit, but um, he's still, like, really good. Like... I was trashing him for his average ADP, um, which was closer when I was talking about him. 
closer to like the fifth round. So getting him in the seventh round, that's fine. Like I know, I know I don't draft him a lot, but seventh round for Sutton, he is still the number one in that team. So we've got four and three. We don't need to lean running back or wide receiver here. We would go with Deontay Johnson, Anthony Miller, but he we can probably wait on him. At running back, I actually see a pretty clear drop-off after Dobbins. So I am going to take Dobbins with this pick. Um, and that means I could take Vaughn here. But that means a drop-off kind of happened. So we're going to go back to wide receiver. And Deontay is still there. So we'll take Deontay. Hopefully with this next pick, we can get... How many rounds are there? So remember, defense in the final round. Probably tight end quarterback in 12, 13, 14. So we have two left. We already have four wide receivers and five running backs. So we do want to go one of each. I like having one more running back than wide receiver on the team. So our option is Pollard, Zach Moss, Chase Edmonds. I don't think we have a running back that we can really handcuff. Oh, Chase Edmonds. Okay. So we could handcuff with Chase Edmonds. Or we can grab wide receiver. I think Anthony Miller is still going to be there. So let's secure the handcuff here. And then let's take Anthony Miller with this pick. Uh, and notice how if I said this is, my, this is my league that I'm like drafting in. And I didn't even look at quarterback. That is legitimately something that I would do. I'm comfortable with some of these late quarterbacks. Um, mostly because... I am fine with Teddy because I, um, I stream the quarterback position typically. Teddy's opening schedule is fantastic. They are going to throw the ball a ton. I think that Teddy's going to be a great streaming option early in the season. But even if someone else also knew that, I could have taken Joe Burrow. I could have taken Goff. Um, and I am actually going to take Newton here. I think that's a great spot for Newton. For people who are going to be upset, like, oh, he's going to go earlier than that. My pick probably would have been Burrow. And if he was gone, then I probably would have taken Teddy, honestly. Because look at his early schedule. Look at – that offense should be pretty decent. Um, and just look at the attempts. He, he's going to have a decent amount of attempts. Tight end. This is also why I don't look. You could take Hawkinson, Johnu Smith, or Goddard. I think I'm going to take Hawkinson because I believe – Detroit is also an underrated offense right now, and he played well when he was healthy. He had a lot of injuries last season, and plus, I mean, uh, Stafford got hurt halfway through the year, so, and he was a rookie. So you really can't have expected TJ Hawkinson to have done well last season. So final pick, we are going to take defense just because uh, you, you have to take a defense in most of your leagues. Um, two defenses that I am pointing out. Uh, I've listed his targets on the site, Chargers and Bucks. They've both gone, but those are the defenses I'd be looking at this season. Um, I think the other one that I'd look at is the Eagles, but I honestly haven't done enough research to have a third team. So right now, Chargers and Bucks are the two teams we're targeting. For when they're gone, I will look for a third team that kind of goes basically undrafted as like a backup plan. But I know I always say I'll research it eventually. Chargers, Bucks. Those are, those are the two that we want. So, um, spoiler alert, this one ranks second. So, among the three that we're going to look at, and actually, how much time do we have until the next one? Good. Okay, we have two and a half minutes to kill. Sleeper ranks second among fantasy pros and a uh, fantasy football calculator in what you should be using. The ADPs are solid. I don't see very many big mistakes. One big mistake is DJ Moore is going too late. They have Odell going too late. McLaurin's going a little bit late. Um, Edelman is too low. I think that is... Uh, Jonathan Taylor's too low. Singletary's too high. So there, there, there aren't a ton. Debo's a little bit too high as well. Those are all going to be adjusted. So I think maybe in like two weeks, Sleeper's going to be really good. I think the setup on Fantasy Pros is a little bit better. But I think it has... It's like second best in everything. It's second best in uh, like user experience 
it's second best in the setup because I mean I, I like this setup but it could definitely be better like I'd like to be able to eliminate the chat I would like to like move this screen a little bit it kind of blocks half of the screen um, but anyways it, it ranks second so if you like using it um, oh but it ranks first with keepers so if you're in a keeper league use sleeper because you can just like click I don't know if I can do it now um, but yeah, you can do like change players. So before this even started, I could have I could have been like, oh, I'm picking fifth, and my sleeper is X player in the eighth round. Make me automatically get him, and then do a mock draft from there. It's the only one that I know of where you can you can do that. Um, yeah, fifty something seconds. We'll like we'll get in here. Oh, I can't randomize this one. So we were second. I don't know. Let's go to the middle. Let's go to like seven. I don't know. Go to seven. We're of course FFA. Wait, did it, it didn't start. Yeah, 34 seconds. So I have a little bit to go over my team. Um, I like how this team came out. DJ Moore is a player that I haven't talked about too much, but he was on an incredible pace with Kyle Allen last season. I mean, his look at, I think I tweeted it out, but his pace through 16 weeks last season was like close to 100 receptions, like four and a half touchdowns with like 1,300 plus yards at 22. I mean, the kid's 23 this season. He He's an exceptional talent. They're the worst defense in the league. They're going to have to throw a ton. They've got a new offensive coordinator who should do pretty decent. They have LSU's old coach. So uh, I think he's an exceptional pick. Shouldn't be going in the fourth round. Um, this next one's starting up. But having more Parker, Sutton, Deontay is not an elite wide receiver core, but it's definitely good. Uh, and the fact that I have Saquon, Drake, Edmonds, Taylor for running backs is more than okay with me. So hopping into our second draft. We are drafting seventh. We have 30 seconds to pick. Our options come down to Dalvin Cook or Joe Mixon. At wide receiver, it's only Adams. No, I don't love the spot we've been put in here. Um, okay. I think if I'm drafting right now, and technically, Mixon and Cook have the same holdout chance. Oh, maybe I need to move Cook up the rankings. Yeah, because uh, that's a really tough one. I'm, I'm going to have to think about that one more. But I honestly think, yeah, if this was my draft, I think I would probably take Dalvin Cook over Mixon, which means I probably need to move him over him in the rankings. I know it's risky. But it's seven. Like, I used to have him at five. I think at seven, it's probably worth it. Because I'd probably take Michael Thomas ahead of him. i definitely take the top four running backs. But, yeah, I think Dalvin Cook. Okay, I'll adjust the rankings there. Um, so we take Cook one. Ooh, Miles Sanders still on the board. Lovely. Um, and those same wide receivers, those, like, tier two grouping that we're definitely not going to take. Um, for this one, I wish I could see. Oh, that's actually better. All I did was close. Okay. Miles Sanders. That wouldn't even be a question for me. I'm comfortable taking Miles Sanders at like, I think I have him ranked 10th, but anywhere in this 10, 11, 12 of the first round, I'm cool taking him. Because uh, especially like Team 12 could have paired Miles Sanders with Joe Mixon. That would have been incredible. I mean, I almost took Joe Mixon 7th overall. So that would have been a nice start. Uh, but having Dalvin Cook and Miles Sanders, I'm good with my running back core. I can lean wide receiver if there is not a running back that I love. Um, at wide receiver, we would take more. Uh, but given these rankings, we might get them in the next round. Um, but yeah, it would be it'd be more or Ridley would probably be the two I'd be looking at um, for running backs. It would be Drake or Eckler or Clyde, but Drake, I mean, you guys saw me take him in the second round, so definitely gonna like him in the third round. And as you can start to see, Sleeper is third. So, or Sleeper's third. Sleeper was second. Fantasy Football Calculator is third. The ADPs on here are just not as good as some of these other sites are. And... Like, this could happen for sure in your hometown leagues. Like, I've definitely been in hometown leagues where people are reaching, you just get incredible value. But if you're in a competitive league, you're probably not going to be able to start off Dalvin Cook, Miles Sanders, Drake. I mean, maybe you will, but you probably shouldn't be able to. 
Oh, now if I can get DJ Moore here, that would be really nice. But I also could just take Clyde. But I think I might be able to get Gurley in the next round, or maybe Jonathan Taylor. And since I started off three, I'll take Moore here. Um, again, I think he's going to finish the top three receiver. Uh, so pretty nice getting him in the fourth round. And I do think there was a drop off. So I have Moore in that second tier. I think he's rated like seventh or eighth overall for me. I think eighth maybe um, for wide receivers, obviously. But all these guys are going in that third tier. So he was basically the last option there. Oh, I would have loved having Robert Woods at that next pick. Um, but options here. Tight end, nope, not looking there. Uh, we could go with like Watson or Allen. But again, let's just wait on quarterback this season. I would never take them early in my actual league. At running back, we can still grab Clyde. Taylor's still on the board for later. Um, we could also grab Odell. I don't think Odell's going to be there at the next pick. Problem is, I really want Clyde. And do I think there's a big drop between Odell and this like McLaurin, 10 seconds, McLaurin, Juju, Parker tier? Probably not huge. And if I just lock in Clyde, I'm like good at running back. I mean, at this point, having Cook, Sanders, Drake, Clyde, I'm comfortable just taking wide receiver at this point, and maybe I handcuff, honestly, I could just go handcuff Sanders and Drake and be good. I don't even need to take any running backs in these middle rounds, so I definitely like having that. The problem is, Gurley's still on the board, so I could take Gurley here as well and be loaded, um, but think I'm just going to take Juju. So that's actually one decision point. Um, we have 30 seconds to talk about this one. I could have taken Odell and then Gurley here. So there's one thing. W what would you rather have? Clyde Edwards-Hilaire and Juju or Odell and Gurley? Because I'm going to pass on Todd Gurley in the sixth round. He's probably a third round talent. But it's just because I don't need running back anymore. And I do see drop-offs happening after Juju. I mean, what's left after this is probably Edelman. Yeah, no, it's it's a big drop. And so I think you, you have to end up taking Juju there. But had I taken Odell, I'd have had more on Odell. That'd have been good. I don't know. I don't actually know what the correct choice is there. I'll post that one on Twitter because um, that's, a, that's a pretty big decision point for your team. Um, I honestly think Odell and Gurley might be the pick, but it's definitely riskier. Um, oh my God. Gurley goes the pick before me in the seventh round. That's ridiculous. He's a third round talent going in the seventh round. Um, at running back, we can still take Jonathan Taylor. Oh, we should probably do that. So Jonathan Taylor, we'll put him in the queue, or Edelman. Who has a better chance of being there at the next round? Probably Edelman, right? You'd think? Yeah, let's, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's hope that Edelman is still there. We'll take Jonathan Taylor. Um, now we've for sure locked in running back, and we're definitely not even... Ah, Edelman goes. We're not going to take one until... I mean, how many rounds is this? 15 rounds. So you subtract three rounds for tight end. So that's 12. 11th. We can probably wait until the 11th and just take a backup. So we're in the 8th here. So 8th, 9th, 10th. We're probably just going to hammer wide receivers. Um... And we want upside, because we got more in Juju who we feel comfortable with. We want upside. So, for upside, Fuller, I mean, that's a pretty easy one. Um, if you told me Fuller was going to play healthy for 16 weeks, I'd be shocked if he wasn't inside the top 20. But I'd be pretty surprised if he was not inside the top 17. Uh, the problem is... He's going to get hurt at some point. But here's the thing. He's going in the eighth round. And I'm not starting him to open the season. And if he gave me 12 healthy weeks, I'm getting 12 healthy weeks that are above average production. So he's going to produce better than the average eighth round pick. So that's what I want. I think I talked about this in yesterday's video as well, uh, which is in the future for me. But the past for you, um, you want players like that. You want someone who's going to rank 10th in points per game, but 20th overall instead of 20th in points per game, but 10th overall. You want those players with high upside weeks. Um, but now that I have 16 seconds, 
wide receiver. Uh, Deontay is going to be there. Anthony Miller is going to be there. So let's try and pick someone in this upper range. Um, I guess Mike Williams would have the most upside of anyone there. I don't love his floor, but I don't love his floor because I think this offense is going to run a lot. Their defense is incredible, and they're probably going to have Tyrod be more of a game manager. And if that's the case, Mike's upside is for sure capped, right? Um, But there's a chance that Tyrod is decent, or at least capable. And what if something happened to Keenan Allen, Mike Williams would be solid. Uh, Plus, you know, he's a good player. He's not like an elite player, but he's good. Um, We have two more, right? Two more we can take. So we can take Deontay Johnson with this one, and then we're going to hope that we can take Anthony Miller with the next one. Um, is that, does that work out? Did I do the math right? 15 rounds, so 15, 14, 13. Yeah, I did the math right. I don't know why I feel like we have... Oh, we probably just have an extra bench spot. Yeah, there's probably... I bet you there was 14 rounds in the last one we did. Was there 14? There were 14. Okay, I was going to say, I was like, we didn't have this many bench spots. Um, Anthony Miller's there. Wonderful. Then with this next pick, and again, see how I didn't even look. I did not look at tight end. I did not look at quarterback because they're still there. They're going to be there. Unless I had seen on the draft board, like I was paying attention to, you know, how many quarterbacks went. Unless I'm looking at this and everyone's taking like their third quarterback, then I can be like, hold up. I do need to get someone. But the odds that there's no one left is like zero in a one quarterback league. Because yet again, we can still take Big Ben, Jimmy G, Burrow, Bridgewater, Newton we're going to take. Um, but again, if Newton wasn't there, I would have taken Burrows. It's the exact same thing. I'm waiting until the 12th round. Did I do that? No, I didn't even do that right. Dang it. I, I talked about doing this right, and then I do it wrong. Um, the actual pick there was to take our backup running back, which, oh my, so we actually do miss out. So technically, I was planning on taking Chase Edmonds in the 12th so that we could handcuff uh, Drake and just assure ourselves that running back one spot, basically. And then I would have taken uh, whatever quarterback in this round. I screwed up. That's my fault, but we'll just take Boston Scott. You could take Zach Moss as well at that point. Um, But actually, that's a really good discussion point. You're in this draft, right? You have Dalvin Cook, Miles Sanders, Kenyon Drake, Clyde edwards hilaire and Jonathan Taylor. The odds that you draft Zach Moss and he ends up starting for you are minimal. It's probably 2%. I'm not even kidding. So I love Zach Moss, but Zach Moss is a player that you draft if you think he might start over your running backs. That's not going to happen. So what you do is you handcuff. You're like, dude, I, I'm good with my five. I'm not handcuffing Taylor because Mac obviously went much earlier. Um, I could handcuff Clyde, but definitely not at this point because Williams would be off the board. You'd be looking at Alexander Madison, Boston Scott, and Chase Edmonds. You're just saying, secure me one of those dudes. I, Oh, there's a kicker. But anyways, secure me one of those guys, and I will be... Uh, no, I'd probably take Robbie. Take Robbie here. Um, I want one of them locked in. If I take, at least right now with no uh, vet signing, if I take Boston Scott and Miles Sanders, if Miles Sanders gets hurt, I'm very sad. But Boston Scott's still going to be great. So I just slide him into my running back two spot. So that's what you want to be doing. You don't want to be taking, like, um, I mean, who's another running back that we like in this spot? I guess if you liked Antonio Gibson, that's not a play you would make because you'd never be starting Gibson over these running backs. You want to take their backups. Uh, I guess Darwin, if you think Darwin is the backup to Clyde, then you can do that. I mean, I I don't, unless they cut Williams. Uh, And Tampa Bay, nice. So Tampa Bay is still on the board. And that's our team. And as I'm sure you'll be able to tell, we'll try and pull up the whole team here. I think something's going to pop up though. So I'll exit that. Come on. All right, nothing pops up. Cool. Okay, something pops up. There we go. So as you can see, this one gets third place because, or as you're going to see after we do Fantasy Pros, it's just it's too easy. The, the ability to have Dalvin Cook, Sanders, Drake, Clyde, Taylor is stupid. That's not going to happen. Uh, and being able to pair that with DJ Moore, who you guys know I love, Juju, 
Well, DJ Moore and Juju, because then I wouldn't say our wide receiver core is incredible, but we shouldn't be able to get these wide receivers we love just like in four consecutive rounds. Shouldn't be able to get Fuller, Mike Williams, Deontay Johnson, and Anthony Miller. Like they should be going a little bit earlier, not incredibly early, but I think everyone there probably moves up around. I shouldn't have almost been able to get Todd Gurley in the seventh round. Uh, Jonathan Taylor shouldn't be going this late. Uh, that's not, I guess that's not terrible in Edelman. He should probably be going earlier now, um, but I'm sure that'll adjust with the Newton news. Um, but it's just, there, there are just too many points that are off that you can build much too good of a roster. So those are two teams that I would absolutely love ending up with. But here's fantasy pros. Actually, let's just make sure. So I did two and I did seven. So we're going to randomize, but make sure we don't get two or seven. Fantasy Pros is the one you want to do uh, for a number of reasons. The user interface is much nicer, it's much cleaner, and it helps you learn a little bit better. But the ADPs are very good. There are very, very few mistakes, and you're not going to be able to build as good of a team. My team's not going to be nearly as good here, um, and it's much closer to what paid leagues are doing right now because they're pulling from the right spots. So we're going to randomize. And we get eight's a little close to seven. Let's do something that's not 11. Yeah, yeah, because we got early, middle, and late. I just didn't want to do one that was basically what we just did. Um, so we're good there. Um, the setup looks good. Here's what you want. Draft against. I have it set, and I think this is really good. Use the expert rankings. You use best ball ADPs, and then you use the rankings on these sites. Right now, you don't touch ADP. But let's say you're sitting there like, well, Nick, I'm on Yahoo, and I want to be mock drafting on Yahoo, right? No. If you really want to do Yahoo, just click like expert consensus, uh, deselect ESPN, NFL, and composite, and just select Yahoo rankings, and then Yahoo ADP. That's what you want to do, and then you can just rip through a bunch of them doing different scenarios because, of course, variance is added into these drafts. So I would strictly be using Fantasy Pro's right now uh and again you're gonna see you're gonna see why plus i don't know just the user interface is much better so we'll pull up the draft board what goes before us and i can actually talk a little bit in this one mccaffrey barkley zeke kamara cook sanders jacobs and henry go at running back and then thomas and adams go at wide receiver since thomas and adams are gone we're not even considering a wide receiver at this spot hide the drafted players um, if we were and we were considering going RB0, we would want to start off with Tyreek and Julio. This is my main league. I'm not going RB0. There's one running back left in uh, this like elite tier for them. There are two or three left in my top, or I guess second tier after like the top four. But I'd go Mixon 100% with that pick. Um, Godwin and Hopkins go after me. So I have the option of Drake or Chubb. I have come down to this decision a good amount of times, and every time I have chosen Drake and been comfortable with it. There's going to be a boatload of picks before our next one, um, and a lot of these running backs are going to be gone. And what I'm going to show you here, look at the running backs that get taken after me. So we get Chubb, Jones, Eckler, Gurley. Second round. We almost got him in the seventh round on Fantasy Football Calculator. So if you're doing your drafts on Fantasy Football Calculator and you're like loving your team with getting Gurley in the 6th and 7th round, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen in your hometown league. Gurley is like a third round pick. I actually think second's a little bit early. But he's a third round pick. And that is accurate on this site. So like I said, there are very few mistakes. Um, they have DJ Moore in the second round. We were getting him in the fourth round. So if you were walking into your draft after doing like Sleeper and Fantasy Football Calculator... You're just going to be shocked. And you don't want to be shocked going into your draft. You do want to be shocked, actually, the opposite direction. So hopefully, you're, you're doing all these drafts on Fantasy Pros, and you walk in, and the draft is like Fantasy Football Calculator. And so you're like, oh my goodness, this is the greatest team I've ever drafted, because these ADPs are just so much different. These, these guys are taking garbage players. You want to draft on these mock drafts difficult. And you want it to be hard on yourself so that it's easier in the draft. You never want to feel like you're behind. And you'll feel like you're behind if you're using these other ones. So, two quarterbacks get taken. Two tight ends get taken. We get Kelsey and Kittle and then Mahomes and Lamar. We are not considering either of those at this pick. Allen Robinson, of course, goes to the pick before us. 
because Sai hates us. Uh, but Galladay, Juju, Moore, Julio, Evans, Cooper, Thielen, Allen Robinson. Goodness gracious, they all go. So our options. We can take Odell, A.J. Brown, or Calvin Ridley with this pick. At running back, we can go... Mm, Carson, James Conner, Jonathan Taylor, David Johnson. Okay. We know there's only two picks. And we know that running back falls off a cliff, especially on this site. We got to take at least one running back. I'm considering taking two. Because I do think there's a chance we can get double tap into this tier on the way back in the next time. It's going to be close. So that's definitely risky. If, like, this next fifth tier is happening at our next pick, we're kind of screwed, to be honest. Like, that's, that's really not a good start. We definitely would like two of these guys. I think we take the chance, though, because I'm going to take James Conner. I'm definitely warming up to him. Yeah, 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 83. There's a huge chance everyone's going to be available at my next pick because my pick was in two picks. I don't like how they make that pop up sometimes. Like, yeah, of course. that You could say that about like every single player because there's only two players going. Um, but I'm, I'm liking James Conner because the more I think about it, his only competition is Anthony McFarland. And you guys have heard me say, I honestly don't love McFarland as a late pick because there's no upside. I mean, McFarland is a change of pace back. He's not a guy they want to give the workload, even if James Conner goes down. Like, I'm not even handcuffing McFarland with James, or James Conner with McFarland because he's change of pace. They don't even want to give him the job. And they've been pretty adamant. They kind of like using one dude. And they basically said Snell's the backup. Like, he's not going to be getting work if Conner's healthy. So they basically come out and said that Conner's a guy. And if Conner is as good as he was when we were taking him what, top seven? Wasn't he like a, a seventh overall pick? He probably shouldn't be going this late. I know it's risky with the injuries, but I already have Mixon and Drake. And so I think both those are probably going to finish as running back ones. If I get Connors as a running back one and have three running back ones, that's going to make up for my lack of wide receivers. So I'm, I'm definitely warming up to him. I do need to move him up a little in the rankings. Um, with the next pick, here is why I think I'm leaning another running back. I can take Bell, DJ, or Taylor. None of them are obviously going to be there at the next pick. At my next pick, I mean, I'm going to be choosing like at Hunt. Hunt's probably going to be my option at running back. So probably take Taylor because I'm shooting just for upside. But it'd be Taylor or DJ, I think. But you look at Taylor plus maybe McLaurin. Or I take Odell and Hunt. I think for me, that's nice. I probably wouldn't take Hunt at that pick if I took Odell here. Um, they wouldn't want two Browns. But I think finishing off our elite running backs would be smart. And so we basically just hope that Tier 5 is not the first thing we see when we exit this screen. So we exit this screen. All right. It worked. It's very risky and your heart would be pounding in a, uh, well, we could have actually ended up with Montgomery here. Your heart would be pounding in, in your actual draft because you just, you don't want to get into this next tier. Um, but it worked. Ooh. Okay. So I have Metcalf ranked ahead of Parker. But one thing that news about AB, that concerns me because Metcalf would definitely be moving behind Parker if AB signed with Seattle. Two, I think Metcalf's going to be there at the next pick. I think Parker's going to be gone. So let's take Parker because they have, who goes? Carry, carry on. And okay, nice. So we took Parker because um, they've basically confirmed he's the guy, right? And when we know Fitz is going to be the quarterback to start the season, it's definitely a concern if they bring in Tua. We don't know the connection they're going to have. But it'd be pretty surprising if they brought in Tua anywhere earlier than like halfway through the season. Um, it's probably going to be fits for a good chunk of the year. And his only competition is Preston Williams, who you know we like. But he was still, um, he was undrafted, right? He's a seventh round undrafted. I'm pretty sure he was undrafted. Um, he's still very raw. 
I know he was good last season on our eight-game sample, but he's very raw. He's still not an exceptional route runner, and that's it. It's not like there's also players behind him. So Parker's the alpha in this offense on an improved team that probably won't need to catch up as much as last season. They're not going to win that many games. So he's the alpha on a team that's going to have to throw a lot with a quarterback who does not care about anything. He's just going to chuck it. With this pick, I am going to go with Metcalf. I know I brought up concerns with Metcalf, given that AB could sign there, but this kid is a freak. I mean, he really is. And if, if AB does not sign in Seattle, whew, I mean... There are people taking him ahead of Lockett. I think that's a mistake. I think I have Lockett, then Metcalf, like back-to-back in the rankings. But I have them both higher than where we got them. So I think that's a good value. So our team, Mixon, Drake, Connor, Taylor. I'm actually comfortable with this team so far. I thought it was going to end up worse. Uh, And then Parker and Metcalf. I like this. We see um, wide receiver getting thin. Uh, Our options are... Fuller, Kirk, Brown, Crowder, Deontay, I kind of view them all very similarly. A lot of people would like Boyd at this pick. I'm just not a Boyd fan. I think that he performed pretty poorly given all the volume he had last season, and he's not going to have nearly as much as he did last season. Uh, So I don't think I'm going to go there. And since a lot of the wide receivers are the same, I don't really want to double dip there. I think I want to take one and one or even two running. No, I don't need two running backs. Let's take an upside running back here. And then we'll do that that same thing where we take a handcuff. So we'll take upside running back and then we'll either go, I guess we'll go with Edmonds late, right? Because that'd be be like the only handcuff we can do. Um, But I guess there is a chance that like Mixon holds out. Connor gets hurt, and Taylor doesn't have the workload, we think. And so we're left with only Drake. But then we'd handcuff him with Chase Edmonds, so that would be fine. So we'd want one running back who, if that happened, could be awesome. And of course, you guys know, Geis has 100%, yeah, you're going to tell me there's a 100% chance that no one would have taken a running back with the next pick. Lies. 100%. It took a running back. Whatever. Um, Okay. So we took our upside running back. I don't think the value of taking a running back, even if it had upside, this pick would be worth it. Um, If there was a top-tier quarterback, we would have actually considered it with this pick. Um, Jeez. Oh, no, okay. I was going to say, with that last pick, if we'd taken Josh Allen. If Josh Allen were available in the seventh round, you'd take him. I even think, with that Metcalf pick, we technically could have gone with Kyler Murray. Um... But no, no, I think you want to go Metcalf there. I think that's the right choice. Uh, but if Josh Allen was available at that Geis pick, which he wasn't, but if he was, I think uh, I think that'd be really nice because I think, I think Josh Allen's going to crush it this year. But again, we're going with wide receiver here. And I think it's upside with Fuller. Again, hey, I know I keep taking some of the same players, but if this is my league, this is what I'm doing. Uh, I'm taking the upside of Fuller. I don't care. Tell me, t- tell me he plays... 12 games. I would lock that in right now. Uh, What round were we in? We were in the 8th round, right? Alright, 8th round. You tell me Will Fuller is playing 12 healthy games. So he's not like a decoy in 6 of them. 12 healthy games. Because you know when those healthy games are going to happen. He's starting the game. I'm all in. Give me him in the 8th round. I just think the upside is incredible. You know how many targets they just lost with with Hopkins leaving? I think that's a great pick. Um, Ooh, that's unfortunate. So Deontay, Lamb, Marvin Jones, Crowder, Slayton goes right before us. So a lot of the wide receivers we really like go. But one didn't go, and his name is Anthony Miller. So we'll take Anthony Miller there. Um, At wide receiver, you'd consider Preston Williams if you didn't have Parker, but we already have Parker. Golden Tate is a really nice pick at this spot. Um, later on, I mean, Deshaun Jackson, Nikhil Harry, Rager, Hardman for some upside. Um, but I think right now I would have preferred Slayton over Golden Tate, but I mean, Tate is, I think Tate is their best inside player. I think he's better than Shepard. 
Slayton's going to have like 100% snap share, or like 95% because he's always going to play on the outside. But Tate is going to be a go-to weapon on the inside. And especially if something were to happen to Evan Ingram again, he's just going to take all those targets in the middle of the field. So I think Tate's going a little bit too early or too late. Um, I think he's a good pick there. But we're split, right? We're, we're good. We got Mixon, Drake, Connor, Taylor, Geis. Nice running back core. And then we've got Parker, Metcalf, Fuller, uh, Anthony Miller, and Tate. So we're 5-5 five and five running back wide receiver. Final three rounds, again, are going to be quarterback, tight end, and defense. So we have one round left. Chase Edmonds, of course, always goes like five picks before we're going to take him. Um, that may have been smart. Okay. So we'll think back to that. Uh, probably would have been intelligent to just lock in Chase Edmonds in that 10th round since I wasn't, I like, I like Golden Tate, but I'm not going to sit here and tell you that he's definitely going to finish better than Nikhil Harry and Rager, uh, Jackson, I guess that's, that's actually probably all that you'd even consider being like a threat to beating him, but it probably wasn't worth it. I probably should have locked in Edmonds. So if we're taking uh, taking hints from from these drafts, obviously I have like seven seconds between these picks, right? So if you're in your draft, you're thinking, you're, you're constantly thinking about possible things that'll happen. And if I had all this time to watch people go off the board, I'd have taken Chase Edmonds in the pick before that. Uh, but... What can we do at running back with this pick? Because I don't, do we really need another wide receiver? Anthony Miller, Fuller, Metcalf, Parker, Golden Tate. Mm. There are no handcuffs, I'll tell you that much. We'll look. We'll, we'll, just, we'll just look at what we have. At running back, Hines is not a handcuff to Taylor. Mack would be the handcuff to Taylor. Hines' role does not change no matter what happens to Taylor. So that's not an option that we're going with. Um, I, oh, Peterson technically, right? I mean, he wants to play another four years. That's what he said. Um, Peterson technically. Uh, McFarlane, you know, I said is a no. Damian Harris. Ooh, that'd be a nice pick. But we can wait on that one. So maybe we take a quarterback we like. Mm, I don't really care about quarterback. Okay, maybe we take a tight end we like. Um, I guess Jared Cook. Yeah, I do have Jared Cook a little bit ahead of this, like, Gasecki, Fant, Hawkinson, Jonu Smith tier. Mm, but I'm not that confident in it. That's tough. What would you guys do with this pick? Our option is basically we take Jared Cook, even though we don't really care that much about the difference. We take Brady, although I don't see a huge drop-off from Brady into, into Newton. I think there's an argument that Newton's better for fantasy. We take an upside wide receiver, but... I don't really see one, if we're being completely honest. Or we take Damian Harris, who's probably going to be there at the next pick. So thinking through that, I think I think we go with Cook here. We see how many running backs go off the board. Well, it'll only be two, actually, won't it? All right, it'll only be two. Yay, they think I got a steal. Um, what do we do with this pick? Um, here's the thing. If I take Brady, I can't stream anymore. Right? I basically have to start him for the whole season. And he's got no rushing upside on a new team. So I'd probably prefer Newton. Okay. I'd probably prefer Newton over Brady. Hey, Harris is going to be there, right? He's got... Now, you know, we don't know that for sure. We don't know that for sure. We'll take Harris. There goes Newton. But Brady's actually still on the board. So we'll end up taking him, I bet. That's a tough one. I think... I think when in doubt, the best choice is to just take the skill player because you're going to be fine at quarterback. So we'll take we'll take Brady. Um, you could take Burrow there as well for sure. Um, and then I think, let's pull up our team. I'm pretty sure that's it for roster spots, right? Yeah, we've taken we've take defense here. Um, cheat sheet. We'll pull up defense. And we will take... Uh, Chargers or Ravens? Um, goodness, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't done enough research into the Ravens yet. 
I mean, we'll take the Ravens. Seems, hmm, that's a tough one. I'll have to look that one up. Um, we get an A minus, barely passing. Nice. So, here's the team. And again, you'd have gotten like a, a 200% out of 100 with the other two drafts just because of how ridiculous their ADPs are. But this is much more realistic into what you're going to be facing in an actual draft. Starting line, Brady, Joe Mixon, Kenyon Drake, Devontae Parker, DK Metcalf, Jared Cook, James Conner, and the Ravens, and then our bench, Jonathan Taylor, Geis, Will Fuller, Anthony Miller, Golden Tate, and Damian Harris. You can tell the benches are certainly not as strong. You know, our bench here has Taylor, Geis, Fuller, Miller, Tate, Harris, and our bench on this other team was Clyde Edwards Hilaire, Jonathan Taylor, Fuller, Williams, Deontay, uh, Boston Scott. Like, there was just, it's a much more solid bench. Um, so this is all to say, draft on Fantasy Pros. No, they're not telling me to say that. Yes, I contribute to the site, but I get absolutely no benefit from telling you to draft on this website. I want you guys to be fully prepared, and you're going to be more prepared drafting over there. So that's the end of this one. Hope you all did enjoy. If you did, how about hitting that like button, and how about subscribing to the channel if you're new? Thanks for watching.